Good morning, church family, and welcome to this Christmas Day service. Let me be one of the first, maybe not the first, but one of the first to wish you a very happy Christmas Day as we come together as church family online to celebrate the birth of Jesus. There'll be people meeting or church family meeting in the church building as well today. But uh, make no mistake, this, this community, this bit of our family is just as important to us as we gather together today. I'm going to read some words as we begin our worship, a shorter time of worship today. Uh, but I'm going to begin with some words from Isaiah. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Let's worship church family. Oh come, oh ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, oh come ye Come ye to Bethlehem Come and behold him Born the King of angels Oh come let us adore him 
What a fantastic carol that is. And isn't it brilliant that today we get to sing all of the verses. Born this happy morning. Church family, join me as we pray together. Father God, we arrive into your presence today and we're reminded of that name, Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you, Father God. That means that as we come to worship with you today, we do so in the knowledge not only that you are with us as Father God, but that you are prepared to be with us as the Son of God too. You are prepared to give your Son, Jesus, to walk with us, alongside us on this earth, to step down from heaven into the messiness of earth so that you, so that you might reach out to us in such an incredible sacrificial way, so that we might be able to have a relationship with you as you intended it. Father God, today we thank you for that birth. We celebrate that birth and we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Church family, we've already read this morning that uh, from those words from Isaiah, the prophecy that came from the prophet Isaiah, foretelling what would happen. And uh, we've already read in there some of the descriptions of who this Jesus was. Well, we're going to listen to some more of those descriptions now, just a way of focusing our minds, focusing our hearts on uh, fixing our eyes on Jesus today before we then come to God's word. So let's enjoy that now.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He who was in the beginning with God, all things came to being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all the people. The light shined in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born, not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Church family, I wonder when you might say that your journey to Christmas 2022 began. Was it when you first saw Christmas adverts on the TV? Or when you first heard or heard that first Christmas song on the radio? Maybe it was when you started writing your Christmas list or even buying presents for your family and your, fr- and your friends. I know for some people it might, it might, you might have had to wait until you tasted that first mince pie or maybe even that first Brussels sprout to say yes. Christmas 2022 is on it on its way or was it when you watched a film maybe Home Alone maybe one of the favorites in my house is It's a Wonderful Life Um, very famous Christmas film but uh, that is one of the things for us that signals the start of Christmas But when we think about it like that it's a reminder for us isn't it that Christmas is more than just today Christmas is more than just a moment You might argue that Charles Dickens got there first when he wrote Scrooge, the ghost of uh, Christmas past, present and future was one of his um, his, uh, uh, creations. But I don't think he was the first. Let me explain why. In those words that were read to us earlier, when John writes his story, his account of Jesus' life, He doesn't start with the birth of Jesus, but with the birth of time itself. He was in the beginning with God. Those words, in the beginning, used deliberately. John says that before the universe began, before there was any big bang or before any elements existed, before there was light or anything else, there was the Word. And John wants us to think here of God's Word as being anything that communicates who God is. The things he says, let there be light, for example. Of course, the Bible itself, the prophets, the psalmists, the commandments, the history, all of that helps us to understand who God is. But It doesn't just stay in the past, does it? These were more than just moments that happened. Their meaning goes on. It was obviously brought into the present when the Word became flesh. Again, let's read those words from John. The Word became flesh and blood and lived among us. Or in the words of the message version, The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. John tells us that part of God's plan was to communicate who he is by sending Jesus. God becoming man, or to begin with obviously baby, to show the world who he is. A God of love, prepared to give everything up, even the wonder of heaven 
to come down to earth and walk amongst us in the middle of all the good and all the bad as well. And that brings us up to the present as today we celebrate that arrival of Jesus on earth. But this was more than just a moment that happened. You see, there was a future beyond that first Christmas that mattered too. A future that saw a baby turn into a man whose teaching and way of living would quite literally change the world. A man who would talk about a different, upside-down kingdom based on love and compassion and forgiveness, where giving everything up was the best thing you could do. And that's what he did. When he gave everything up and died on the cross for you and for me. That was this baby's future. Now, The more observant among you will be sitting there saying, future is it, Steve? It's not really even present, even though it's what we're celebrating today. Okay, let's talk future then. I want to suggest today that future is what you choose to do with the knowledge of Christmas past and present. You see, you can choose to regard it as a nice story that happened hundreds of years ago, or you can choose to believe that this baby was sent to grow into a man who would change the world and is still changing it today. You can choose for it to be a moment in time, or you can choose for it to be the beginning of a new journey that starts today, a journey towards light, and love, and life. You know, I may be a full-time pastor, but as I stand in front of you now, I say all this today because I don't want it to be just a story for you. I desperately want you to know Jesus in the way that I'm so grateful I know Jesus. He has changed my life, transformed it, saved me. And my heart is for everybody who hears this Christmas story, whether for the first time or maybe for the hundredth time, to recognise that the reason God sent Jesus is so that we could have an encounter with him, so that we could meet with him, so that our lives could be transformed, so that our lives could be saved, not because of anything that we might do, but because of everything that God was prepared to do for us. My prayer for you today, recognising that your Christmas journey may have started many months or weeks ago. My prayer is that this won't be the end of your Christmas journey. In fact, it'll be just the beginning of a journey with Jesus as your Saviour.
this child that you've delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know? What a beautiful rendition that is of that song, um, which tells obviously so much of the story, not just of Jesus' birth, but what he came to do, um, the love that God had in sending his son Jesus, the plan of redemption that God had in sending his son Jesus. We're going to respond to that and we're going to respond to uh, God's word as, you know, that idea of Christmas past. Uh, present, future that we've just explored in God's Word um, as we pray together. And uh, what I'm going to use uh, here as we pray is one of the earliest recorded prayers of the church, and it's in Aramaic. It's a word called Maranatha, which literally means, Come, Lord Jesus. Of course, we have come to the end of the season of Advent, this season of waiting, of wanting, of looking, of longing, of inviting Christ to come once more or maybe even for the first time into our lives and into the world. 
So we're going to use those words as the basis for our prayers on this Christmas day. Um, so as the music plays, just as we focus our hearts, as the music plays, just for a few seconds, I want to, you to, I want to invite you, just in the comfort of your own homes, whether you've got someone next to you or you're on your own, to re repeat this most ancient of prayers, just maybe under your breath, out loud if you want to, maybe in your mind if you want to, several times, just slowly together. Maranatha, come. Lord Jesus. We're going to stick with this prayer for just a little longer. If you're aware of parts of your life that you're struggling with, that you haven't fully handed over to God, that might be getting in the way of your relationship with, with Him, I want you to acknowledge them before God now, saying, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Now I want you to take a moment just to think of someone who needs Christ's love today. Praying for them, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Next let's think about maybe our church family and all the activities that we have this Christmas, all the opportunities that we have, whether collectively or individually, to live out God's love to those around us. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. And then finally, I invite you to think of a place in the world that desperately needs Christ's love and peace and comfort today. Praying with me, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. In the 12th century, St. Bernard of Clairvaux uh, had his own take on the idea of past and present and future. He said that Christ comes three times. In the past to Bethlehem at the first Christmas, in the future at the end of the age, and in the present day lives of those who choose to believe. So as we close this time of prayer, I wonder if you'd join me in reading the words that appear on the screen in bold. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much that you sent your Son to save us. Maranatha, may Jesus be born again among us this Christmas. Thank you, Jesus, that you came before and are coming again in glory. Maranatha, we long for you to return and make all things new. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for filling my life. Maranatha, may the Lord Jesus Christ be born again in me today. Amen. Oh
Church family, what a privilege to have been able to share in this Christmas Day service with you. I'm sure you've got lots lined up for today. I pray that you will have a blessed rest of Christmas Day that amongst maybe busyness, there'll also be opportunities to reflect on everything that we've listened to and thought about this morning. I pray blessings upon you in the week ahead. Maybe as you're off work, maybe as you spend time with family, whatever it is that you're doing, may you know God's blessing. And uh, to remind you, of course, that we have a family-friendly New Year's Eve party uh, that's happening at the church, not surprisingly on New Year's Eve. Uh, so the details for that are on the website. And then we'll be together again on New Year's Day. It's going to look a little bit different in the church. We're going to be uh, enjoying a one big family service that just may, uh, just may include some bacon and, and sausage sandwiches, I think. Um, uh, Recognising that people may have been up late the night before. Um, but we'll also worship. We'll enter into, we'll, we'll begin 2023 as we intend to go on worshipping God, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus. So let me finish with some words. Well, they were the words of the heavenly hosts, my Bible says. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favours. Bless you, church family. I look forward to being with you again in 2023. Thank you.